Hello there and welcome to Blog Bites. This is Deb Shell. I am excited to uh, chat with you today about the most recent blog post I put up on the Fine Calm Here blog. Uh, just a reminder that you can find this on finecomhere.com on our blog page, or if you are a subscriber on Medium, you can actually go to Medium and find me there and subscribe as well if you uh, search for Deb Shell. So today, this week, I gotta say, just to FYI it for you, it's been a tough week, so uh, this conversation about purpose really went deep <laughs> for me. Um, so this week's topic is about discovering your purpose. The um, program that I went through last year to get certified for a UMAP as a UMAP coach uh, really helped me narrow in on my preferred skills and my strengths. And this year they uh, updated the profile and the assessments to add a component called purpose map. And so what I've done is I took uh, the purpose map section and then I explain it with the prompts in this post. So um, basically I'll just give you a little bit of the, the beginning of the post. Um, from the time I was little, I knew that I was going to help others. I, I really did. <laughs> Uh, I recently reflected on my personal journey and it has really been emotionally draining. I realized that it's because every time I've had to make life decisions from lack, a place of lack or scarcity, um, when you don't have money and you're constantly trying to figure out how to make money and you know, you don't have the ability to, you know, wait for a long period of time to figure it out. Um, you just go job hopping. And that's what happened for me for most of my life. So, um, but when I quit my corporate job, I had this voice, uh, especially during the pandemic of, you know, doing, following what I really want to do with my life, which is really to help others and to write. And so as I talked, um, as I explain here about purpose, I have three steps to finding your purpose. And this is uh, not steps for you. It explains what the steps I went through. And if you wanted to work with me um, in my coaching program, this is the steps that I would have that I would help you work through. So uh, moving one, step one is moving through um, imposter syndrome. So um, I wrote a blog post on this previous and you can um, search and find that as well. But um, what I realized when I was writing the Creators Community Builder book, which will be published later this year, I was struggling with imposter syndrome and just feeling like I wasn't good enough to write the book and all that stuff. Um, but when I realized that my top, one of my top strengths is restorative and being resilient and just, you know, in addition to like being self-resilient and being able to like continually just get up when I fall down, I also help other people get up. And that's something that's neat for me that I have a skill of helping people find calm. It really is something that's innately within me and I did not ever know that. Um, until very recently. So um, that's what the power of understanding who you are innately, that's what it can do for you. Um, so recently I've, you know, tried to dive into like, what else can I, am I really great at? And one of the, cause I've struggled with making a living at writing. Um, and so I thought, what else am I good at? Well, I'm good at organization. I'm good at productivity. Okay. So those are some things that I'm good at. Um, I go through a little bit of explaining around my background with newspapers and how I've been innovative in each role that I've always um, tried to innovate. And I think it's really silly that we live in this, this, I did do a blog post earlier this week, which I didn't do a blog bite about, but about uh, that, the system of hourly wages. So um, maybe I'll do a blog bite on that at some point, but not today. <laughs> um, anyhow, so then I put those two the, the concept of my strengths and my preferred skills together to get together to this, get to the point of this purpose statement. And so the purpose statement I came up with was, I am curious, and this can always be changed and customized. I always rework this. So this is probably like my 12th iteration or something, who knows? Um, I am a curious and innovative leader interested in growth through organization and prioritization. As a creator turned community builder, I found 
uh, value in connecting to a community of peers to help me to discover what my ideal life looks like for me so I can continue to help others. So from that, then the next step here, uh, step two, is to dive into like that purpose statement and go deeper with some um, insight questions that they give you some prompt questions in the uh, workbook that is the companion to the um, report. So when you do UMAP assessments, you get a report and then you work with a UMAP coach and you get a workbook. And so in the workbook, they have a new section with the purpose map section that goes through our questions. And here I've just, I haven't put the questions in for you. I just answered the questions. And so what this says is I had some two insights came out of the questions. The first insight was I care really deeply about helping individuals who have a gift that they want to share. Um, why is it we don't share? I asked the question, why, why don't we share our what we learn our life's lessons with others more and why isn't that something that you know is valuable is something that we could charge people for i feel like those our life's work is valuable and people would pay for them we we, we learn this all the time it's just how do we how do individuals like me how do i put that together and i think that's what i've been helping clients with over the last um few years so the other uh, insight I have is about the struggle of community in 2023, because while everyone loves being a part of a community and this idea of collaboration and connectedness, community builders are the most burnt out people because they continually give of their time and they want to be those supportive people. They hold the space. And at some point, other people need to step up or they need to be compensated. Like people, people can volunteer for so long and then obviously then other people have to step in to volunteer because somebody can't volunteer forever. Um, and so one of the things I point out here is that I've just really struggled with this idea of like, what's, what do we, why is it that we value monetarily certain careers and not others? For example, like community building, you know, online community building is kind of relatively, you know, new within the last 20 years, right? But like the idea of a community is like, historically we haven't survived without community so it's i think it's this concept of we can't survive without a community but yet so it should be free for everyone however we live in a society in a capitalist society where people ask us to pay for things and charge us for things so i don't live rent free i can't go to the doctor without paying for something i can't get drive a car before i buy it there's a there's a hundred things that I need money to do. For example, there are a lot more than a hundred things, but you get my drift. Why do we why is our society okay with well, a writer gets paid X amount while a doctor gets paid this amount? And it's just because our society has said that's what it is, and we've accepted this. And I'm arguing that I don't really want to accept that anymore. I think that that's stupid. <laughs> you know, it works maybe 50 years ago, 100 years ago. It doesn't work today. The systems that we have today in 2023 are not working. And that's why everybody is experiencing so much stress, overwhelm, anxiety, and challenges is because we have technology that we haven't thought about. We haven't been intentional with implementation of technology into our life and therefore we have this whole transition of people who lose their job and then are struggling and struggling. And then the, so that's, I kind of talked a little bit about that, but the power of purpose is like understanding that community is what makes the difference and helps people succeed. So in the midst of our challenges, that's when community can be the most powerful. So that, I just want to point that out for you. Um, and I won't go, I, this video is already longer than I wanted it to be, <laughs> but I talk too much. Um, and then the third step is about brainstorming ideas. So this is where the idea generation comes in. So, okay, so we've talked about Deb has uh, certain qualities. I need, I need, 
strengths, and each strengths, values, and skills. What does that mean for putting an offer together? So I give you some examples about, I learned that something in the marketplace people really find valuable in some of the spaces I've been in is having notes. And I've been on a lot of virtual summits and workshops. And once I started sharing my notes with people, they've found a lot of value in that and actually very much appreciated it. And I, I basically stood out among hundreds of people because I was providing value and because that was my innate skill and, and a skill that I learned because I was a, I was actually a court reporter and some a, a reporter and somebody even said in, a, in an event this week, Deb, I feel like I'm, you know, watching a court reporter work. And I said, well, I was a reporter. So that's true in a case, in a, in a sense. Um, so I put that together by saying, one of the things I did was learned about that that people on these calls, they don't wanna wait for the slide decks from the speakers sometimes, and they want notes, but they don't wanna take notes. So I solve those problems by taking notes for people and then sharing them. And sometimes people pay me by buying me a cup of coffee. Sometimes people uh, connect with me. Sometimes I build partnerships or relationships or potential client, clients out of those relationships, but you never know what's gonna happen. But starting with that seed of good, um, innate, like I'm just trying to provide value to for value's sake not to get the client but in a way of like this is my strategy of going to business um and then the other point about like I'm thinking about going into virtual assistant work maybe if if client work is is slowed down then maybe I'll go to virtual assistant work right now I've got some clients but that might not always be the case so just thinking about different ways that I can implement and work with people um, and how do I support them. So if you're looking for some fresh ideas, I've always got lots of ideas. Uh, so I'd be happy to, to chat with you. Shoot me an email and let me know. Uh, have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>